Hey, question for you. Regardless outcome, you're a legend. You said on Thursday that this young man wasn't a real fighter. Mm -hmm. How has your opinion changed after 30 minutes of scrapping? Uh, yeah, he does. he's... For sure, my uh, fight mentality, he does, he does, uh, I knew that already. He's just not, that wasn't a full contact fight, so. What surprised you that he had tonight you didn't expect? <clears throat> um, nothing, uh, you know, like I had uh, a couple shots I didn't fucking see and that fucking pissed me off, but I wasn't surprised. I, I expect that with everybody. You asked for a uh, 10 round fight, were you, Thinking of employing kind of a rope-a-dope strategy later in the fight, you'd be able to come on and he got tired? No, like, just like I said, I'm not full of shit at all. I was, um, I was, uh, like, if you could fight ten rounds or three, what would you rather do? You had some success. What would you rather do, three or ten rounds? I would rather do no rounds. Please. Yeah, I mean, any, anybody, though, right? Like, fuck, I'd rather have three rounds. I'm tired just thinking about it, but... No matter how, I've always felt like that. No matter how many rounds my fight goes, if it didn't go my way, I know if it would have gone longer, I could have won. So I'm like, fuck, I want 10 rounds. And they're like, you got 10 rounds. Fuck, what did I do? You had some success. You had some success in, in these rounds. Some of these rounds were close. Do you feel like if you hadn't taken pauses, kind of clowned a little bit, that maybe some of these rounds you could have won, the fight would have been closer, even gone your way? Yeah, woulda, coulda, shoulda. <laughs> Nate, did anything he do in that ring in terms of his power or when he caught you with that shot that dropped you, did it surprise you? Yeah, I didn't, I didn't see that one. I felt that motherfucker. <laughs> I hop up and recover a little bit. And, uh, yeah, no. I know, I know what I was coming for. Coming for a fight with a, with a big, strong, motivated, pumped up guy to take over the world. And uh, nothing surprised me in this shit. Were you ever worried that he could continue that on and you were going to get dropped again, or you were like, nah, I got this, and, and you felt No, he better. I just was like, he, be he better. Did so you I feel expected. like you hurt him tonight at any point? Uh, I, think I, I think I hit him with some good stuff, but uh, and some good combos and some good shit, but uh, I think I could have done better. And I think, uh, like I said, would have, could have, should have. Hey, Nate. Uh, what did you What did you think of the crowd? They were cheering your name throughout the whole fight. Can you hear them in there? Ah, uh, yeah, I heard it. I heard it get loud and loud. And uh, yeah, you tell me. I gotta rewatch the fight. Hey, this I is think a very uh, successful cool. event for a uh, real fight. What's next for real fight? Everybody's very excited. Yeah. What was that? What was that? It was a pretty successful event. I heard the gate was the second highest in American Airlines history. What, what's next for real fight? Real fight. Yeah, we're gonna do a show. We have we have plans to do some stuff, and uh, right now we're gonna go home. We're gonna talk about it. And we're gonna figure out whether we want to do MMA or boxing, and then we'll see what they want to do. They said they want to do the PFL thing, and uh, I think that we'll, we'll if, there were, if we want to do that, we're gonna have to cope them on do real fight versus uh, PFL, and uh, I'm with I'm with that. Uh, my my goal is to get get rematch in uh, any art. What were you thinking when you got Jake and the kids here? Oh, done deal. That was already uh, that fight. In a real fight, this fight's over, and we're sitting up here with the win. <laughs> but we were participating in a boxing match, and it was a, it was a good time. And uh, now I know, because I was curious too. I was like, I'm gonna get in a boxing ring, and uh, I know what I think, and I've trained my whole career boxing with pro boxers on the highest level, as high as I could get, and done really well. And uh, I've never fought in a pro fight, so I like I think I'll whip all these motherfuckers' ass. But uh, that's just what I think. Let's go in there and get a feel for it. It felt just like what, what I'd imagined. And uh, what was the question? Yeah, I'll fuck up everybody. <laughs> what's was handed. in the cage? Is that a little preview? Oh, the guillotine? Yeah, that was too easy. Yeah, it's too easy. And the takedown was too easy, too. Uh, I just fucking knocked the punch in his whole leg with my in my chest. I'd be trying to take people down in MMA. They smash my hand and fuck me up. And I get tired and all kinds of shit. I'd be like, this is easy to fight. Fight uh, boxer in real fight. Mike, hey, what, what, <laughs> that was great. What did you think of the just the promotional side of it? Like, what did you take away from it? What learning lessons are you gonna go home? With? I learned. A, I learned a lot, and I and, and I watched a lot happen. And I know exactly what I'm going to do next because I've seen all of it done more than anybody, more than the media, more than the fighters, 
within the new promoters. I'm like, I know exactly what's going on here. What what's the pros and cons after this week for sure. And they give their criticism on what I do in the media. Uh, bro, we're trying to. <laughs> <laughs> It's all good. I'm just kidding, and uh, and I I I got I think it was a good experience just like train with somebody to learn how to defend a choke or something because he got fucked up. So it's like oh we fucked up here and there and there. And they had that criticism on how I'm doing my promoting on my side, but uh, every UFC or any big show that I fought in that turned out to be the biggest shows, it was it was on it was because I was doing. What the fuck I do, and whatever the fuck I do, usually we end up being the highest gates and numbers and all kinds of shit. So I learned that, that I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Cocky ass, my <laughs> Wait, hold on. Wait. Um, would you ever consider continuing doing boxing? Is there anyone else that you would consider sharing the ring with again? A hundred percent, yeah. That's my, uh, that's what I was saying about the experience too that I just learned from. From uh, fighting out there, I didn't know if these were fucking little ass the size of MMA gloves and I didn't even get cut tonight. I get cut in every MMA fight I fight, and I, I can box for another. I don't want to go get my, you know, you get brain rattled by some good people, but. <laughs> what is I, a name? Anyone you would? I have nobody, nobody now, but I'm sure I'm gonna go home and hear criticism and see see people fight fights and see see I'm gonna see all kinds of shit. So next week, get back to me. I'm, I'm sure I have a list full of motherfuckers' asses to whip. <laughs> Straight ahead to Platt. Right over here. Uh, Nate, right. Nate, you're in the back. Marcos Villegas, fighting TV. Hey Nate, you know, how did Jake physically feel in there? Easy to take down. Easy to choke. <laughs> <laughs> hey, nah, he did a good job, and he, he's he's a fucking athletic, strong dude, and uh, and he hits hard and fast. But it ain't nothing I ain't seen before. And I've trained with people for for I've trained with Mike Russell this camp, and he's the big guy. But these these guys can these guys can throw down. And it's good shit. And my follow up is: uh, Did you notice a difference at all, you personally, uh, between the, the forehand gloves and, and the bigger gloves? How yeah, yeah that's what that's what I was saying. I I did. It just felt just like sp spine gloves. I mean, I mean obviously <laughs> smaller, but uh, way bigger and different than MMA gloves. I don't like MMA gloves either though, because I can't land. Uh, it's good as punches, and it doesn't feel as good to land punches. So I like the 8-ounce glove. Chris Belcher, House of Highlights. Jake has been talking about fighting you in the octagon. Would you do that? And if so, how do you think it would go? Yeah, I think I, I kind of already said that. I think I would, I would fight him, and it's easy to take him down and easy to easy to choke him. He was talking about his wrestling credential the other day on the, <clears throat> in the interview, and I was like, what? How soon would you go about <laughs> fighting him in the octagon? Is that something you'd want to do soon or just let it go? I'm not later? cut. Two, three, four months. I'm ready to rock. After MMA fights, I'm cut to shit. My legs hurt, and I can't walk. And that feels good to be okay. <laughs> Thank you. Congratulations uh, you know, for making it all the way and putting on a, a great performance. Um, you mentioned, you know, your cuts. Talk about the job that uh, Jacob Stitch Duran did, you know, throughout the corner. You know, you haven't, you know, really been cut up or, you know, putting the swelling down and keeping you in the fight for one more round. Yeah, shout out to Stitch. He was in there keeping me good. And, um, yeah, you know, we stayed in there good. You were talking to Jake during the fight. What were you saying to him in the ring? I was just, I was just making fun of him, telling him to do more shit. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, how did you just feel competing up this way? If it's the highest you did in a fight, did you feel like slower? I would have rather like to, to stay, stay smaller. Or if I went up to this way, I would like to have trained like I, I do honestly when I'm smaller. I was trying to kind of, uh, I was concerned with getting bigger and shit, and uh, I didn't think he was much bigger than me. I thought he was, I thought he was bigger than that, training for the fight. That's why I said I had big ass Mike Russell in the train with. I was like, he's gonna be Mike Russell size. Mike's like, uh, he's huge. I was like, dude, the hell, but at least he's fast. I was like, why am I training with your big ass? <laughs> Over there, classes. Nate, how'd you feel in the fight? Did you feel like you were winning the rounds? I feel like I should have done, um, 
Richard got mad at me because I wasn't training. Uh, I should have been training. I should have been throwing, throwing punches, keeping them on the outside, and uh, doing a lot of stuff. Like I said, I said in an interview, I'm not trying to make excuses, but about a month back, I was trying to stay big, and I hurt my arm a little bit. And it was, it was, it was wearing and tearing on my, my right arm if I was jabbing and doing a lot of stuff, so I would get inside and fight like a, fight like a Mexican guy, smother their punches and get in there. And, and, uh, and make make every sparring session a brawl, and I did that kind of a camp, and that's how the fight went. And I think I should have kept on the outside, circled, and did better stuff. I know I pissed Rich off. He don't want me to say, but and he, he wanted me to keep him on the outside. And I should have, but uh, it's all good. There's no way I'm not gonna show up for a fight because of something like that too. You gotta go regardless, I, like no matter what. So uh, I plan on doing my next one if it's gonna be boxing. We're gonna, we're gonna work good. And, at the end of the fight, did you think you worked like a small guy, not a big guy? Yeah. <laughs> did you think you won the fight? Like at the end, did you think you did enough to win? Like no, I didn't think I won. I knew, I knew, uh, I knew it was when he got the knockdown and stuff. So I figured I won. A, I won a good amount of rounds. I don't, I don't. No, I gotta watch the fight, you know. So because I know what I think and I know what it's probably. And then last one for me: Do you think he ever really takes you up on the challenge to fight you in MMA? Yeah, I know he spoke. Yeah, we're gonna see what happens with him. See if he really wants to do that. And. Um, if not, I'll be back in this hunting him down. Jiggy, their ways He said it would be ten million to fight him in MMA. What would it take for you financially to fight him in MMA? Yeah, we're gonna talk. We're gonna talk. Yeah, we're gonna talk about it and fucking make sure uh, everybody's happy for sure. A yeah, lot more than that. Just to, <laughs> just to elaborate on that. Yeah, hand me a little bit of money, like let's pay the win. It's not. It's not gonna be ten million. I'll tell you that. Your teammate Chris Avila had a big win. Can you talk a little bit about Chris Avila's performance? Oh yeah, I should have been talking about. And Alan Sanchez did a great job. He had a good fight. What did you guys think about uh, Alan's fight? That was a war, Mexican well, war. Yeah, it was a good fight, and uh, yeah, it was really good. And then we, Jose did his thing, and Ramos, and everybody, and Kilo had a hell of a fight. He had a hard uh, opponent too. My guys from my gym, dude, that I trained with every day, they came in here and they all showed, they all showed out. And I was, I was over there at the gym a little bit earlier this morning and walking around throughout the day. I was watching their fights on the phone, and every time something went, I'm all, I'm all juiced up and ready. To, and then I'm like, oh yeah, I still got to fight. Shit. Hold on one second. Back left corner. That's you. And shout out to the team. In the blue tie. Um, shout out to the team. Love. Now you said yesterday, uh, you know that this guy can't really fight. Has your opinion changed on that in that regard? Yeah. Well, well. I'm not trying to fucking talk shit. He's fucking boxing high level guys, uh, MMA, and you know he's sparring hard and working with good people. And uh, and then he starts talking shit to me throughout the camp. Like, you know, I come to the territory and it's all all is fair. Love and war. I'm always about that. Say whatever you want. That's fun. But then when you start making things person, trying to make things personal, saying shit he shouldn't be saying. That means it more than something that hurts these and people's feeling when I say this ain't a real fight, because it's a real fight. Remember Logan Paul and Orleans? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? No problem. This is not a real fight to be talking to me like that. This is a boxing competition. So um, that's what I meant by he can't really fight, you know? I'm So it's not overly disrespectful when, you know what I'm saying? Is there a pro Can't boxing? really fight. Don't be talking shit. See Connor's <laughs> tweet? What did you think? What did he say? He basically said, like, not interested, and then he sent something to Sweetie, the girl who walked out with Manastrana. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. What did he say? I, one for Richard Perez. What did he say? Richard, Richard what did it mean to finally walk out? Uh, Fuck that fool. What? <laughs> <laughs> that <is good>. what? <laughs> what did it mean to finally walk out Nate's boxing match? It's awesome. I mean, I love, I love the way he boxes. He just, he, he got hurt. And so that, that, throws you, that throws you back. You know, if we, wherever the level you're on, you have to slow it down. So it... Your timing's off, and then he couldn't throw the jab very good, and that's how he got caught with the hook, because he threw it and dropped it, you know, and then before that he hurt his knee, but it's all good, he's not going to quit, you know, he's not a quitter. Nate, sorry, um, are you aware that you're a victim of the Joy Curse? Uh, <laughs> he put $250,000 down for you to beat Jake Paul, uh, it seems as though, as you know. Everybody he bets on seems to lose. Somebody work out? <clears throat> yeah, whatever. Shout out to Drake. Love for the love. I appreciate it. And you know what I'm saying? What the fuck? Hey, we'll break that curse. Two <laughs> more questions. What's happening? Is there a pro boxer? Fuck a curse. <laughs> is there a pro boxer that you like to watch? And is there a style that you'd like to teach Nate if he continues to go forward in boxing? I like Mike Tyson. <laughs> Ooh, -hoo, yeah. Is there a style you'd like to teach I Nate? I like his style. When he's not hurt or anything, he's 
awesome. He's a good What do you call that style? Well, how would you describe Nate it? Diaz style. Sick. <laughs> Dope as fuck. Last question. Yeah, right. Last it. question for both of you guys. You guys sold out the building, record game. The crowd was obviously almost one-sided behind Nate tonight. Uh, your career obviously isn't over, whether in MMA or in boxing. Real Fight has their own promotional show coming Hold up. up. Hold Hold up. up. Hold Yo, turn it up! <laughs> Show's over. <laughs> Man P. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> Dan. <laughs> hey, who had that button? <laughs> Hit it in three. <laughs> that was perfect timing. Man five, we'll catch you next time. With, with as big with as big of a performance as it was for both Nate and Real Fight tonight, would Dallas be a market you guys want to return to in the future? Is that for me? For both you guys. I'll start, absolutely. I mean, we got so much love here all week. I mean, from the beginning, as I said before, we've been to other boxing shows similar to this, MVP shows that were great, great opponents, but nothing like this. This was an event. This was a boxing show. And it was sold out and it made news. And I ask you, who did make news become? I mean, great, great co-promotion, but it's because of what Real Fight's doing. It's because what Nate's doing is the power of him. And that's why the crowd was the way it was. And that's why the buildup is the way it was. That's why the social media was because of the way it was. So, you know, I'll let Nate answer too. But, you know, when he said we're here to take over, I mean, this is what it looks like tonight. So we're here. So, so just following up on that, you know, there were tickets available for the UFC event. There were none left here. It looks like we were selling, or this event rather, was selling at something like 450% higher or something like that than the UFC. What do you think it says about Nate's draw power that the UFC was not selling out while he was somewhere else and it was? I don't think it's a competition. You know, I think both organizations can do really well. Got a lot of love for the UFC. You know, and tonight was, you know, a great night with a long, long build-up for a fight that people wanted to see. And I think everybody can coexist, including Real Fight, on that grand stage. Thank you. All right, we're going to go. <laughs> hey, uh, uh, shout-out to the team, Jose Guayo, uh, Romulo Kilo, um, and Real Fight, Inc., Chris Villa, yeah, Alan Sanchez. Shout out to the team, and I appreciate uh, the Nick Diaz Army. Everybody come and rock with me. It's love, and shout out to Clarissa Shields and James Tony. Westside. Show peace.